Hi, I'm Jessica. Hey, I'm Sakaya. Hi, I'm Sydney. And this is not Crash Course World History with John Green. Today, we will be discussing Mongol society with a special focus on, you guessed it, women. Cute, Jerome. and began with the unification of the Mongol and Turkic tribes on the Mongolian steppes. And poor Timujin, trying to rise as a powerful leader, but had many haters. He defeated all of his rivals in 1206, recognized by his followers as Genghis Khan, meaning firm, fierce, and resolute leader. And in regards to geography, the Mongols spread throughout Asia and at the height of their glory expanded from Korea to Hungary and as far south as Vietnam. This made the Mongol Empire the largest empire known to man. Yes, the Mongols were literally everywhere. Maybe Sydney's a Mongol in the sky. But today we want to uncover something that's not often talked about in Mongol history. That is the importance of women in empire. During his reign, Genghis Khan raised the status of women in the prominent positions, specifically for his daughters and consorts. And as Jack Weatherford reminds us in his book, The Secret of the Mongol Queens, Altani, a daughter of Genghis Khan, was awarded the title of Hero Bato, given to major figures in the Mongol Empire with successful military and political careers. Altani received this title when she saved the life of her younger brother, Tuli. Sky, Sky, if the Alphine was a hero, does that mean she has superpowers? <gasps> now we from the past, Artini did not have superpowers. What she did have along with the rest of her sisters was a, a crucial role in the Khan's diplomacy and warfare. They married leaders of surrounding tribes such as Ongud, Uyghurs, and Orats. They also came to control the Silk Route and assist Genghis Khan's campaigns in China and Persia. After Genghis Khan died in 1227, his successors quickly neglected Khan's legacy. His son Ugadai attempted to purge his female relatives in order to consolidate his power over the Borjidin claim. According to allegedly planning the assassination of Genghis Khan's daughter, and in the period following Ugadai's death, Khatans briefly ruled the Mongol, Mongol Empire. Their ability to control the empire made them the most powerful women during this period. Most of the women ruling the empire surprisingly were not Genghis Khan's daughters, but his daughter-in-laws or granddaughter-in-laws. Succession difficulties with male relatives meant the cotton were quickly diminished. An important female figure to note is Ugadai's granddaughter, Kutulin. According to Marco Polo, Kutulin was described as being a superb warrior, one who could ride into enemy ranks and snatch a captive as easily as a hawk snatches a chicken. Kutulin was also famous for her beauty. She mastered three main sports of Mongolia, Mongolian wrestling, horse racing, and archery. Kutulin's enemies suggested she and her father had an incestuous relationship, and that explained her resolve not to marry. She married a follower of her father in order to protect him from the rulers. But as for women as a whole in Mongol society, women enjoyed f more freedoms than those in their foreign vessel countries. They refused to adopt to Chinese practices of foot binding and wearing cordars or burkas. Women were also allowed to move about freely in public. In comparison to other civilizations, Mongolian women had the power to influence society and often were turned to for advice by the men in their lives. 
Genghis Khan asked for assistance from his mother when developing tribes within the empire. Because of the help of his wives in decision making, Genghis Khan was able to choose his successor. Well, back to the queens. When the male descendants of Genghis Khan became prisoners or puppets of other nations, such as Alans and Kipchak, the Mongol queens tried to save them from captivity. Hey, that sounds like the makings of a great comic book. Well, you sure are ambitious, me from the past. Knock yourself out. Sumer Kutin of the Four of Orats and daughter of Elbat Khan was the most prominent. With the death of Samar, the strong Mongol queens did not perish from history. A new Mongol princess named Mandakai was born in 1448 and later married Mandamu Khan, who restored the empire in Mongolia. When Mandakai's husband died in 1478, Mandakai had the choice of marrying Umbola or taking the Mongols back to the Ming dynasty to be vassals. Mandakai elected to rule instead and recovered Bantumanke, the missing son of Bayanmanke, to ascend the throne at the royal shrine, kept by the Chahar with the title Dayan Khan. Since Dayan Khan was a child at the time of this ascension, Mandakai became empire's de facto ruler while rising Dayan Khan to become an effective ruler. Together, they united the entire Mongols, restoring order throughout the empire. When Mandakai died in 1509, the Mongol nation stretched from the Siberian tundra and Lake Baikal in the north across the Gobi, beyond the Yellow River, into the Ordos. So by looking at stories of Mongol queens, daughters, and prominent figures, we see how much of an impact women had on society in this empire. Without the help and advisement, of female counterparts, the Mongol Empire would not have been as vast and well known as it is today. In fact, women are important in every society, and some women continue to climb up the ladder of prominence. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Since Dayan Khan was a child at the time of his assassination, <laughs> Mandakai, since Dayan Khan was a child at his, uh, what the? Hey, that sounds like a, making for a good, hey, that sounds like the, ugh. Are you playing? Yes. Let's play spin the bow. No, so far. Hi, I'm Jessica. Hi, I'm Sakaya. Hi, I'm Sydney. And this is not Crash Core World. <laughs> What she did have to do. Shut up, sit No, we from the past. Oh, hey. She <laughs> <laughs> from Korea to Hungary, Vietnam. Far south is Vietnam. <laughs> do you want to redo this? Yes, please. They also came to control the Silk Route and assisted campaigns in China and Persia. Wait, let me say that again, I'm sorry.